One of the most important things to grace the astrophotography processing space has been the ability to remove stars, process images on a starless level, and then add those stars back in. There's many, many ways to do it. One such way we use is a star exterminator. And of course, everybody loves that. You end up getting beautiful starless images like this right here. And then we go into programs like PixInsight or Photoshop or whatever, and we bring those stars back in. We may manipulate their color. We might manipulate their size. We might do all kinds of different things. But what about if we could do all of that at once in real time? Well, that is what Cyril has done in their version 1.2 beta. It's a pretty dang good tool. Is it 100% perfect yet? No, but it's definitely a new way of looking at how to combine these images, and I love it. I showed it in my last video. Maybe some people didn't see it, so I think it deserved a little video on of its own. Let's check it out right now. I'm Chad, this is the Easy Astro Images channel, and we are gonna process some photons tonight. So we have this image of a part of Barnard's Loop open up here in Cyril, which just, man, and this section of space is just amazing. I mean, the horse head is like literally right next door. It would be a dream to do a huge mosaic to get all of this captured one time. That is for sure. But we get about four and a half hours of data on this. I literally did like my usual three to four minute process of everything. And this is what we have right here. So what we're going to be doing is showing you a couple things in Serial. Now, tip, typically what you would do during your workflow is you would go to the star processing here and you would go into the star net star removal and you would check this little box right here that says recompose stars on completion and that is going to bring up another box but unfortunately in this case Starnet did not do nowhere near as good a job as Star Exterminator did. So what I'm going to actually do is we're going to open up the images in that process that I actually did in PixInsight. Sorry, Cyril, but you know, that's just the way it is right now. And we're going to click on star recomposition. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to select the two images that I want to work with. So the first image is going to be the starless image that I had created in PixInsight and that'll load up into the screen. And you can see the tool has started here. There is our starless image. And here is its histogram and everything here on the left. And then I am going to load my stars that I got from that image. And we'll just get those loaded up here for you. And there we go. Now, immediately, it's going to do a little bit of a processing. And you're going to see that, hey, we've got stars in our image. So... This is where all of the fun starts. So I'm going to actually move this over here to the side here to the process console so you can see what's going on and I'm gonna click on advanced. Now, if you wanted to, when you pull your stars out using you know, the inbuilt Starnet tool and you click on that button I showed you before, it'll immediately bring this up and you can do this right then and there in your processing. Or you can do the typical thing, which is to pull everything out, work on your starless image, work on your stars, and then you can use this to put your stars back in to the perfect size that you want instead of maybe using different versions of pixel math or going into Photoshop and rescreening or anything like that. So we've got different kind of stretches here. You can see that our stars haven't been reduced or anything. Everything's completely linear. So what we want to do is click over here. Let's just make them smaller first. So we're going to click on the inverse modified arc sign transform. And if we go to the stretch factor here is when we make this bigger, it's actually going to invert this and it's going to make the star smaller. So just to give you a big example here, let's just put in a huge stretch factor, a huge stretch factor of four and watch what happens. It's going to do this in real time. There you go. 
Everything is just completely minimized. If they're too small, which, you know, I think they are because the stars just really add a lot to this image. It's a very tough one to kind of get right and figure out. Um, we could go back to two and there's a little bit of the star size right there. Um, if we wanted to, we could just reset this back to zero and for some case, let's say that we wanted to make the stars uh, actually bigger. We can go to the modified regular, which is not an inverse, and now it's going to make everything larger. And boom, there you go. Completely crazy, I know. We don't want to do anything like that. We can reset the tool, and then we can go back down here to the inverse modified, and you know maybe I would settle somewhere around 1.5, and see how that looks. Yeah, that's perfectly acceptable. That looks amazing. Now, while you're in here, you can also work on different things inside of this image as well. So if you wanted to pick out a different part and either apply the generalized hyperbolic stretch, um, an arc sign, or any other kind of stretch that you wanted to to this image. So if you wanted to process it on the fly, you know, and why would you want to do this? Well, let's say that you either made your sm stars too small or too ball too big or something, and maybe you notice while you're doing this in real time that they're either hiding a feature or a feature is not being, you know, shown correctly, or maybe you're starting to get halos around your stars you don't like, anything at all. But just the ability of this tool, you know, to do this in real time is just pretty freaking sweet. It's not like a complete guessing game where you're dragging and dropping and everything else like that. So, you know, I, I love those easy type of processes and stuff. Um, but, you know, when you get into like working with, uh, you know, higher end data sets and everything, it's definitely pretty cool. Now, the one thing that I did notice is that it doesn't really, um, you got to go pretty far to like get rid of stars. Um, you know, typically when I'm using uh, different, uh, you know, I usually use Bill uh, Blanchon's star reduction methods. And, you know, most of the stars will act, you know, some of them will literally just disappear, which is fine. Um, but, you know, this is pretty cool that it seems to, you know, you really got to go like super aggressive on this uh, to eliminate a lot of the stars. And even as big of a, as an inverse stretch as we have with the four here, and we zoom in, you can see that not many of the stars, and if we take this back to a two, you know, not many of the stars, they just don't disappear. They just keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller i mean heck let's just go crazy and take this down to like an eight um you know there you can see that we're starting to get you know some bad effects and stuff and i think we actually did might have lose some stars going down uh to that point but yeah just a few but boy you really gotta you really gotta hit it hard to uh you know, even take the stars away. So at this image, I would leave this at just like a two. And, you know, that looks just pretty dang perfect to me. And we'll flip this around the right way for everybody just so they can kind of see what this would look like. There's the boogie man there. I've been trying to capture this image for literally over a month, but battling the clouds and everything has just freaking really held me back which sucks um i have uh went on to telescope live and purchased um an sho version of this and i'm planning to save my credits we'll talk about telescope live coming up um, so that way I can actually shoot a bigger version of this. I'm all in like, you know, RGB because I love all the true colors that are in this, uh, this image here. So, you know, let me know what you guys think. Do you think this is as cool as I do? Um, again, it's not perfect, but I tell you, this is, it's just cool to see another way and the way that minds are thinking to do things. And again, Cyril is open source. So this thing could be improved within a week, within a month. Who knows? They could make it as just go as fast and as far as they are able to. So give it a try. See what you guys think. Talk to you later. Peace.